Hello, friends, and welcome to a fine day of Collegiate League of Legends. This is the second day of the top 32 bracket, and it's C LOL playoffs being casted by, well, it does say Yanni, but I am Yarko, in fact, and I am joined by Hawk and Shibby on color. Thank you so much for being here, guys. How are you feeling today? Well, I'm happy. I get to talk with one of the most handsome hosts of the Salty Runback Pod, Mr. Ben. <laughs> oh, Hawk yeah. Has yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blushing. I'm, I'm very honored. So I, I'm super happy to cast <laughs> with you guys. Obviously, Yarko, we've been casting together for a bit now. Yesterday was a nine-game banger. I'm hoping for this day to be nine games. But we'll see. You know, I, I would be pretty surprised if, if we went the full nine games. I gotta be honest. Like, I'd be, I'd be pretty surprised. But crazier things have happened in the Zelo scene. So I don't know. But, I mean, Nyarko, it is a beautiful day today. I am so excited to cast some Collegiate League of Legends. Yeah, and, you know, craziness is the name of the game here, honestly. We already had some big upsets deeper in the bracket yesterday. So, I would yeah. imagine that the same kind of narrative could come through today. Or, at the very least, we could see some of these competitive teams take some matches off of one another. Let's look at what the bracket's starting out with on the top side. We got St. Louis University taking it over Team RPI. Not necessarily one of our upsets, as that's the second seed kind of expectedly beating the 31st seed. But, we got some other ones that are a little bit less close. I'm going to leave that to you guys. Take us deeper into this. York taking the win over University of Toronto. I think York is one of those teams that, you know, even though they're the 19th seed, they come from such a strong, strong conference, and they're such a strong team that, you know, I think this was more of a contentious match where it's like, well, either of these teams can take it. Uh, York ended up taking the win, which is, you know, not that surprising. I think the most surprising win out of this bracket was the 22 seed Ottawa Braves taking on UCI, the West one seed, and actually beating them 2 0. Not 2 1, nothing close like that, off the back of Trickster and Levi for Ottawa Braves, a team that I hold very near and dear to my heart because I got to cast them during the MEC this earlier season. I'm expecting them put some damage in. I, I, I'm going to call it here, call it out. Mark my words. Top eight Ottawa Braves is happening. Wow. Chibi, <laughs> I was about to say, like, aren't, aren't you the Ottawa homer? You were the MEC guy. I mean, that, that's coming out in full force already. But, I mean, the Twitter memes also wrote themselves. Everyone's already clowning on the West. Uh, you know, if you if you want some, some free interactions on Twitter, just say something yes. disparaging about the West, and you'll probably get likes <laughs> right now. Um, because, yeah, I mean, Ottawa showing up big time and taking down UCI, a team that has traditionally been a very well-established collegiate powerhouse. And so, huge win for the MEC showing up big time. But I mean, y'all, there, there's more of the bracket to look at as well. This is only one slice of the little pie that we have in the sea lull. We can hop over to the other side in the Maryville side of the bracket where everything is maybe looking a bit more expected than we might have thought, except Shibby, I got bad news for you. Um, <laughs> MEC didn't show up on that side of the bracket. <laughs> oh, oh, you yeah. hurt me. You hurt me. So far, looking at it, as you're kind of saying, Hawk, we've got the expected outcome of the Bethany Esports and Northeastern matchup. Although, as someone who casted that, I can report that that went three games. It was a reverse sweep, as was everything on the Battlefy B stream yesterday. Moving down from there, we got McMaster University defeating the University of Florida in what was another very close match. University of Florida kind of stomped in that first game, although something that we didn't feature here and therefore was not going to be part of the 2-1 curse was the Maryville University and Utah varsity match. I mean, that went about as expected. Maryville, certainly one of the top competitors, kind of defining this bottom side of the bracket. Yeah, reverse sweeps, domination. You want to talk about it all? That last matchup, GVU versus Illinois State University, that was a, a, a battle of mental fortitude, right? Illinois State, they lose game one. End of score, they were down 18,000 gold. GVU dominated across the map. And then in game two and three, the absolute mental fortitude from ISU to win game two and game three. Both games, they were down early, and they were able to carry off the back of their ADC disconnector here. That was a very, very good match. Uh, it was insane. I, I do. My hearts go out to the GVU Vikings, but at least Ottawa is still <laughs> in there. St. Clair, though, uh, handedly taking over NCSU 2-0. I think that was also expected. Five seed versus the 28 seed. But now... Enough about the bracket, enough about what happened yesterday. Today, right now, we are getting into the draft.
Yeah, we're already here, and of course, this matchup that we have for you all today, the first one on deck, is going to be one of the pre-tournament yeah, yeah. favorites, the University of St. Thomas, reigning Sea lol champions up against the Butler Bulldogs, and they are playing for the honor of facing off against that scrappy York Lions team in the round of 16. Y'all, we've already got some bands hitting the board certainly do and i'm super excited to see what both of these teams bring to the rift so far greg is knocked away by butler university on red side while the university of St. Thomas opens the volley the band not only of the ziggs but Lame. also of the recon yeah i don't think it's any secret that usg are one Never of the favorites right? they're expected bare minimum to make top four right if they don't make it to the finals i believe this program would think it's a failure on their part they've kind of upgraded or tuned their roster a little bit. Dardock has been a new addition into the jungle and Daption, who is going by the name of Amba Singh, is now in that bot lane. And by the way, Dardock, Robbie Bob, and Daption all playing on Team Fish Taco for the NACL. Oh, and by the way, uh, Ben, isn't their coach, Alorum, also <laughs> playing on that team? Yeah, yeah, Alora, the coach of the team, also was uh, was a part of that. But of course, TC Porsche is going to be the top laner here today. But I love how you bring up that point, Shibby. The the changes to this roster, not only did they win CeeLo last year, but with Dardock coming in throughout the CeeLo season so far, UST has yet to drop a game. And to be honest, I think we're expecting oh. that to continue. A Butler team coming out of the Big East, considered to be one of the weakest partner conferences. They didn't even have that shining of a season. It was a miracle lower bracket run that gets them here. But now the Lucian Melio coming out. This is my first time seeing this champion in a competitive match. Maybe the explosive bottom lane 2v2 will be enough for Butler to try to make some waves in this game. Lucian Milio is now the new Lucian Nami. It's absolutely disgusting what Milio does to enable Lucian, like a shorter range AD carry, to get these sh bursty, bursty trades going on. I don't doubt that TFT has seen has seen this lane before. They pick up the Jinx Lulu, they pick up something scaling. On paper, right, UST, they just have the better players. Pound for pound, solo queue ranks, all that stuff. But now, we're in top 32. You could be going up against a trap game. You could ego this team and Butler could take a game here. Do I expect it? No. But after yesterday's madness, you know, Butler have a good chance. This is the team that gets weird. Very, very weird, Hawk. Well, you know what? And if you want to upset some expectations, Kiana is a great champion to do it on. But <laughs> I do want to bring up one more thing. We're talking about the Lucia Melio, right? Butler, they're going for a bunch of aggressive picks. But we'd be amiss to talk about UST and not mention their ADC on Shogo. On a signature champion like the Jinx, Lulu by his side. This player not allowed to play in the NACL qualifier scene but has been the king of CeeLo. I think many people would say the best AD carry in this tournament. This team likes to play around him. They're already set up to do so well. Jinx, Lulu, Scion, all champions that stack super nicely together. And now we see the fans come out for the second phase to try to further shore up UST's roster. I do love what Butler's going for, though. I gotta say, that's maybe a Kayana jungle, but really gotta focus it on that Milio, one of my favorite champions. My current one trick in the knockaway of the Cassiopeia Syndra, the double control main, means that they're trying to stop a bunch more CC from coming down, controlling this Lucian and Kiana, and maybe also shoring up that Jinx. Meanwhile, on University of St. Thomas's side, so far it's an Olaf ban. Yeah, they're banning out pretty standard. I think it's kind of annoying to play against Butler because they just lane swap around. This is a team that was notorious of moving their players around for advantageous matchups. These guys will take their mid top lane, they'll put their bottom lane or top. Like, they don't care where they pick these players. These guys have specialty champions that they play that they're willing to take anywhere so they can get an advantage here as the Annie goes down. And so Hawk, I think that call out, or Nyarko actually, with that Kiana jungle, I think you're actually on point, but now we see a little bit more of a standard composition coming out from UST. I think it's in their best interest to not reveal their cards so early.
And generally when teams are in a situation like this, with one being the overwhelming heavy favorite that we do have in UST, they want to decrease volatility in this game. You can see it in the picks and bans. Very rock solid, stock standard, even the Wukong, right? Champion that has been so present in the meta, falling this far for Dardoch. They just want to get a composition that functions well and functions efficiently without allowing too many gaps. Butler, meanwhile, Things like that Kiana potentially going into the jungle, like the Lucian Melio. They are trying to increase the volatility. They're trying to create a game that might just make UST uncomfortable and try to force mistakes. And I think... And what in the world is coming out here to lock <laughs> up the final part of this bracket? Butler University grabbed themselves a Gwen. Where's the front line? It looks more like a hunt line for Red Squad. They're just on the prowl looking for a pick, but they have to do so into an Ari. They have to do so into a Wukong, and this is going to be a crazy one. University of St. Thomas drafting a little bit more soberly, and I like how it's all lined up. Yeah, but and I mean... This 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 UST composition, very rock solid, as I already said, but I gotta be honest, we were getting a little hype about the Kiana jungle. This looks this is, looks like not a Kiana jungle angle. Against Wukong, Scion, Ari, <laughs> incredibly strong, solid topside. Lulu do also deny you, and as you said, Niarko, the lack of frontline, the lack of really any setup either. Outside of a flash tibbers, you don't have actually a whole lot of ways to get fights started. So, Butler, we talked about creating volatility. I think they've done that, but I don't know if it's the right kind. This is the volatility they need to create, Butler. You've teased me. I've watched you. I want to see the Corky top. Give me the Zach and Ziggs bottom lane. I want to. I, I want you to come out guns a blazing. Yes, I like Lucian Milio. I think it's a very strong lane. But I'm expecting a Butler team to pull out all the stops here, especially against a team like UST, who is just playing standard, right? Robbie Bob on the Ari, Wu Kong in the jungle. A lot of good dive setup onto your Annie, onto your Lucian. Yeah, you take the Gwen into the Scion match. Up. really good for Gwen high scaling champion can rip through the team but there's not enough in my opinion creativity Kiana jungle like you said it is a wrench but Dardoch has played against everything this man has been in the scene for a very long time he's seen it all he knows what to do this isn't it's hard to throw a monkey wrench in, against such a seasoned veteran here so I was expecting them to do it against players like Shogo like Daption like TC Porsche who may not have that matchup experience who may not have been playing the game that long trying to get that edge in the jungle I mean, if, if it's anything if it's anything it's ballsy for Butler <laughs> ballsy indeed and I think where their win condition does ultimately come from Lucia Emilio Kiana I've got to say these champions' names over and over because they can, if they get going, take over a mid-game, and the skirmish potential on the bottom side is immense. I'm expecting this Annie to want to try to move down to the bottom side. Be first to your 4v4s. Be first to your 3v3s as Butler. And you know what? This more scaling team fight oriented comp that UST has might actually struggle to get in there, but you've got to be very, very on the ball about your rotations. And if we know anything about UST, it's that they're pretty damn good at not allowing those cracks in the armor to surface. And what I'm kind of worried about for Butler, especially when you're looking at the bottom side of the map, is the fact that not only is their homework to get ahead, but they're doing it up against a Lulu in the hands of Daption, who actually can be quite a lane bully versus Milio, who really only has their Q skill shot and powered autos to try to attack back against this champion. But you get in with the Glitterlands, you get in with, in with your help picks, and Jinx actually has an angle to do quite a bit of poke damage down, especially if Milio has to exhaust their W on themselves in order to get get out to safety while healing up so that dynamic that bounce back means that i don't think that this jinx is going to be quite as bullied as one would expect and that's something that i need to see butler university try to shore up and hawk like you're saying i think that's really well done with the annie but you have to somehow get priority versus ari which can be very difficult given the mobility that champion has <sighs> Hawk, you said it earlier today. We talked about it a little bit in the green room. You don't expect any of the games today to go to three. Butler is oh, you're, about you're, to You're really putting me on blast with this one. Yeah, I, 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 I got it. Look, I, I'm the one who called Ottawa to top eight, so I know I'm going to get blasted later on this, this, this bracket. But the thing is, I think Butler will surprise you. UST, like I said, I think the way they drop it is if they ego a little bit too much, if they think they're a bit too good to lane properly against 
Butler. I like the Lucian Milio. I think Kiana Jungle is a cool angle. It's ballsy to throw that up against Dardock. I see all the Butler fans in Twitch chat. I think I'm I think I'm getting hype talk. I think they've made me drink and huff the copium and the Kool-Aid. I think Butler has a very good shot of taking game one. All right, you know what, Shibby? You're welcome to have the Kool-Aid. I'm going to continue uh, drinking the, the juice of truth right now. I'm taking UST at least in this game one. I think their comp is way, way too solid. Our Wukong is more than enough of a mid-jungle for Butler to be able to handle, and I think if this Lucia Melio can't get going, it's going to be a very tough road. And I got to be right there on the bandwagon with Hawk. Shibby, here's the thing. I like cheese. I don't see cheese from Butler University. This, this is the stinky cheese, the like that that yeah. smells bad, you know, and no one exactly. wants. It's moldy and it's ugly. <laughs> yeah, it, it just feels like Butler University needs the ones to draft soberly, while University of St. Thomas ego during the draft. But clearly, Blue Squad is here to play, and while we do have a five man on both sides of the rift to start us off, it doesn't look like we're going to be getting any clashes. Just a little bit of vision dropped. You saw both of these teams prioritize like a top lane invade for Butler, a bottom lane five man going down for uh, UST or University of St. Thomas here. But so far, warding on both sides, it actually feels like Butler ended up getting a better, deeper ward onto the jungle of USC. So they're going to maybe find out by process of elimination where Dardock is starting here. Um, although he is going to go Leisha, so it might be a little harder to determine as Gwen is going to come out from that top with a little bit less mana and a little bit later to lane. So they'll know where Big Butler Kim is starting. But critically, though, we've already emphasized the importance of this bottom lane, and you can see Daption and Shogo having snuck into this bush, able to get some control over this lane. And if Jinx Lulu is able to keep priority on this, it's going to be very, very difficult for the Lucia Melia to find trades back. So far, the trade's already going deeply in favor of University of St. Thomas, and that's the time to do it, right? Before, Butler Nackdog gets a whole lot of ability to actually, like, do damage back or just displace the Lulu Jinx, and this kind of lane that you really need to see get ahead early, being shoved in this soon, kind of spells worry for Butler. They're gonna have to look elsewhere for the time being, or maybe if Kiana really hightails it down here, they can try to get a gank off before the bounce back occurs. Yeah, so far, standard play across uh, the map here. Nothing too crazy. Mid lane going as expected. I do like Annie, though, into Ari specifically. It's really good at controlling her, right? The point and click CC, one of the most devastating things, regardless of how how and where she dashes around, you have a really good way of locking your ass. Now the flash for Flash, Butler Levi! And it's going to be a counter gank into the mid lane as well. April coming around the corner, beaten down onto him and eventually they will just peel back off flash to flash like you said the kiana crucially is going to keep that so they can gank another lane but now it's a bot side it's got more action that is on Daption? the scene going quite low it dropped by nat dog and that's going to force back daption shogo also has to exp expend the heal so actually it feels like butler came out ahead on that one with Cathago still maintaining their cleanse not over butler playing oh. Yeah, once again, it's action on the bot side of the map, but this time it's taking place in the jungle. Now Kim has her flash forced out of them by the deep invade that April angled for. Dardoch can now continue to push deeper into enemy territory. They have Robbie Bob to back them up. This could be a potential die. This could be a chase. On this is ambitious. These low health bars are going to make this dicey, especially with the teleport being channeled in. Ooh. I think that blue squad just have to back off. Ooh, that that was almost looking a little dicey for Butler, but UST correctly back off, Hawk. I, I thought we were going to see something. Yeah, you know, you, you would think, but really nice TP answer <laughs> there from Levi, but it's still favorable for UST. They're able to get a farm advantage for Shogo on the bottom side as well mm -hmm. as Robbie Bob still has the teleport available for when he takes his first base. And you know what? Flash for Flash in the mid lane, I actually think this favors the Ari into the Annie matchup, especially post six, lots of kill threat can come through with the Spirit Rush and the Wukong flying over the top to look for a play. And at the end of it all, you can already see USC, they've I, properly identified the bottom side of the map as the place where everything is going to go down, sending resources towards there to try to get an advantage.
We got about 30 seconds before that first dragon of the game spawns on up, and I want to see who moves over there first. No first bloods have been claimed, but University of St. Thomas has done such a good job picking up a little bit of a CS lead that right now they do have an item advantage. We'll see how they cash that out and how they impact the map off of it, as that's the Kiana getting bullied once again, this time by the support of all things, going to only about 100 health. They can't even clear the jungle. He's got a backup. Butler Kim not allowed to play the game. I thought he would maybe repeat gank mid lane because of the flash for flash trade. We really need to see that before this RE gets six. Because like you mentioned, Hawk, it starts looking very, very good because of no flash on Butler Levi. As really in the top lane, doing pretty solid. I think TC Porsche is handling the Gwen pretty well, though. Porsche, very well known for his weak side top lane gameplay. He did it all of last year. Was extremely reliable for UST throughout their CeeLo run, and I expect nothing less in this series. Handing Newtly pretty well. I mean, you know, they're pretty even at CS, the Gwen, just a little bit behind. And this matchup will, in theory, start to become more of a win condition for Newtly as the game goes on. But see, the thing about Scion is you don't got a lane, really. You can start ulting to other lanes <laughs> with that unstoppable onslaught and making some noise. I'm expecting uh, a back to come through at some point from Porsche, and you've always got to keep your camera on the bottom lane when that happens. There's a lot of options here for this Scion. Yes, they are going to struggle as this lane gets later because that Glenn is really going to start doing that percentage health damage and tearing through the defenses of this champion. But like I said, there's tons of flexibility there. Although, first and foremost, we got to see if they can survive this game. Him pushes in onto Porsche. Ooh. We see a little bit of an approach with the ultimate, try to turn that around, but ultimately they think better of it. Presses the R again, cancels it, and now he's just looking for a reset. He assumed Kim would come tower diving in. That was a good preemptive uh, ultimate from the Scion, but overall, you just trade a bunch of HP. No TP available, no ultimate. He is going to have to walk himself back into lane, but the lane's pushing, so he's really not going to miss much. I want to point out, Kim showed up in that lane, still level 4 on this Kiana. The bullying <laughs> from Dapshin and Dardoch has just been brutal. Nearly 7 minutes into the game, that is not where you want to be. And Dardoch leveraging that advantage into a dragon for the side of UST. And I see this continuing for a while longer. At what point is the Kiana actually going to get presence within the lanes or impact things enough to be able to start taking some of these neutral objectives? Because now... Into nearly 2,000 gold ahead as we are getting back into it as well. Whoa, <laughs> guys! I'm getting thrown into Tron well, I'm sure we'll have everything resolved there pretty soon. You know, we get to look at a, a, a little bit of a League of Legends rainbow in the meanwhile. But I, I do agree with you, Shibby. We can use this time to just take a step back and, and take stock of everything. Because UST having this advantage at this point in the game, remember, it was Butler that needed to create volatility. And that has not really been able to happen, at least so far. I'm still waiting for level 6 on Kiana to potentially be a window, but... <laughs> It is, uh, it's, it's still a long way off. We talked about already the XP differential. And so Butler, it, the clock is ticking for them to find a play. I think it is probably best if we throw it back to the casters really quick and get ourselves a little bit better situated. I think that the full streaming platform is currently falling apart in front of us. So while we're in Jackson Pollock world, guys, do you have any more of a read <laughs> onto what this game is looking like? It's, it's looking pretty messy at the moment, right? Based off of what I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just messing. Uh, I think UST doing a very good job just intrinsically and innately using their champions, using their player skill just to, like, kind of get their own CS leads. Hawk, I love that you mentioned that Dardock and the rest of the crew went down to make sure that Shogo got that CS lead. This Lucian Melio is so starved at the moment. You would think that this lane, you would be able to pick up the early dragons. You would be yeah. able to start the dragon stacking. But now, because of that bullying, because of the level lead, they have that win condition in their back pocket as well. Now, UST just playing textbook standard League of Legends, and it's not even that they're 
they're doing anything crazy kills or outplaying. They're just outbraining them. Yeah, truly. I mean, USC, you can see how rock solid of a team they just are. They're, as you said, kind of just playing better. All of that stuff, all the advantage that they have stems from that attempted gank in the middle lane. The flash for flash trade. Dardock is able to counter back, get a health advantage, translate that into control of the river. And UST, you give them an inch, they take a mile. They get the maximum that they can off of that. And they've not relinquished that control since that time. And I want to keep reiterating this. Butler, the ball is in your court court to make the play that can break open the game so we're waiting to see if that might be able to happen but so far it has not and the stop gap, the thing that really worries me about Butler's chances here in game number one is when people articulate the strength of St. Thomas to me, they tell us it's a team that really looks to go for the late game, scale up and punch people down from there in explosive team fights. What do you do when you're getting stomped early, when your jungler doesn't have priority, and they're probably going to get outscaled by the Wukong because of the raw income that the Monkey Man is currently getting? You get you do weird. anything? That's what you do. You get weird, all right? You go down five man <laughs> bottom, send everybody there. Who cares? Right? Tilt them, do something. I think there's, uh, if you're looking to play standard against a team like UST, you are looking to get uh, absolutely beaten down here. The Kiana's a cool pick. I like the flash for flash trade into the mid lane, but you've got to follow up. You cannot relent on that pressure because if you let this game get to that calm state, if you let it get to this, oh, we're just going to farm, we're just going to ping pong lanes back and forth, like you said, Hawk, that mid lane flash for flash, Wukong then turned that into a Kiana chunk, which then Daption then went into the jungle to chunk out Kiana more. The butterfly effect that happens because UST understands something that's happening on the map, they are just willing to, like you said, take the inch, go a mile, and even further. And I feel like Butler has yet to face a team of this caliber. So they have to understand, every microcosm of mistakes are just going to get exploited to an infinite degree. So, Nyarko, I know uh, at the beginning of the game, you said you're, you're a fan of cheese. You would be totally fine with Butler trying to cheese, but we didn't really think that the composition was cheese. Like, at this point, I feel like this is the kind of cheese that's been sitting out for, like, weeks, and no one wants yeah. to eat it because, like, we've not seen the big moment uh, so far. Yeah, for me, Cheese has to have some kind of novel approach to the <laughs> right. game that kind of knowledge checks better players. For me, uh, something like that would be like Cassiopeia Twitch Bot, where you could proc the double poison and stuff that, like that. That is Cheese. Um, that is most certainly an example of Cheese. <laughs> I, I was proposing a Zilio bot lane yesterday to Shibby and Yanni. I don't oh think they were on gosh. board, but it's like you throw grenades onto a minion and you boot the minion at the opponent. Um, the thing is, Kiana Jungle isn't Cheese. It's just kind of a bad pick right it now. It is like, kind of terrible. The last time you saw this impact especially impact, against right? wukong wukong super <laughs> meta and it, it is yep. fantastic in the 80 skirmish junglers and kiana is both of those things like I, oh no yeah, yeah yeah so it's just messy on that front <laughs> Nyarko understands, man. He knows my hatred for crushing blows, Sheen Wukong. Mm. That thing just absolutely wrecks face. The moment he picks up the Sheen, the moment he picks up a kill, it becomes a nightmare. And like you said, the Kiana's not cheesy enough. I, I'm expecting game two. When it gets to it, I'm going Corky top. I'm expecting the Zach Ziggs bottom. I know Butler can do it. I know Butler wants to give it out. Feels like USD aren't willing to reveal a lot of their picks. Going really standard is smart for them. So that any amount of game tape, you can't really do anything, right? It's not that valuable for whoever they're going to go up against in the later rounds. So it's just like they're going to willing to play standard. So you have to play substandard. You have to play a little bit different and find these angles to where like you can exploit the Ari. You can exploit the Scion. Send three top to dive when Wukong's taking bot, right? Cross map. Even if it's inefficient, look to cross map because that will that throws them off what they're expecting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, I'm still waiting for that Kiana level six before we call this game over. We're about to get yeah, back in yeah. in just a minute or so. We will have League of Legends on your screen. Thank you all for bearing with us through the technical difficulties. There we are. We can Whoa. see the rift once again. And as I said, I'm not going to call the game over yet, but God, whoa, 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 hang on. The game is looking over. We are not where we <laughs> left off. <laughs> We're definitely not. How are, the, how are the kills so shockingly even, yet the gold lead has massively catapulted UST into the lead. They're up about 6,000, 7,000 gold. Here comes the cavalry from Butler University to try to stop the invade. There is the much stored Kiana ult, and they do manage to pick up a kill onto the Lulu because of it, but that is a small price to pay for the utter domination we're now seeing on the rifts in favor of Blue Slug. 
Unfortunately, we couldn't catch any of the action that happened before because of the technical difficulties. But now you see the power of UST in a matter of minutes. It's five to four, but they are six thousand gold ahead at the 15 minute mark. I mean, this is just what they do. They are an unstoppable force. You have a two item Ari in the mid lane. Heart Steel Scion. Wukong's got the Divine Thunder, and Shogo is eating really good. CS differences across the board here. USD, I, I know we were getting a little bit ahead of ourselves talking about game two, but game one right now, it's looking cut and dry. It most certainly is. I mean, in the first game of the 2023 CLO Championship, UST, they are picking up exactly where they left off on top of the world in 2022. Shogo, so far ahead. Robbie Bob, so far ahead. The carries that have seen so much success with this squad over the last year or so. Kim, potentially getting caught out. But UST, you know they just want to knock down this last outer turret in top lane. And look at how deep Robbie, Robbie? Bob is going. A little bit too deep, perhaps, as the Tippers is dropped on them. That uh, only turns into a one-to-one one one trade. But now we refocus on the top side of the map, as that is Dardock with a Cyclone knocking up Carthago. And that will be the Lucian sitting back to the fountain. That's that Wukong dive that is so, so annoying if you play AD carry. You want to ban that champion out because he can go invis, he can flash E Cyclone you, and before you know it, your HP bar is gone as now Julie is immune. But, like you said, Hawk, they're just having a little bit of fun. They're limit testing. They're seeing what they can get away with. But any more of those, a couple more of those happens. Wait a minute. Yeah, that is a blast plan to deliver the key on it straight into the Claws of Dardog. But a supreme display of talent comes out, gets the double stun, and that's Lulu having to walk back. They're going to Ujify April, oh, but now Shogo finds the angle in with the rockets, gets excited, gets the double double, and is now looking to tear down this top tier one. Porsche, the hero of that fight. I know Shogo got the kills, but he had a massive Scion ultimate. Yeah, yeah, he did. And the Q over the wall as well. Porsche, top lane gaming, he's invisible for the first 20 minutes, and then he shows up at the at a team fight and is like, guys, I'm helping! Uh, but UST, <laughs> they're just using that Herald. They're gonna take everything. This game is looking all but over once again. UST, one of the heavy favorites coming into this tournament, and you can see why. And I usually call the 10,000 gold lead as kind of the breaking point in most games. The thing is, <laughs> that's happening at the 17 minute mark here for UST, and they're getting even more because Robbie Bob is a full on AP assassin on that RE, catching out the Annie, and this time not dying to the tower. I see no way back into this one for Butler. They gotta look at their second draft, they gotta look at their second game. I love how generous you are. At 10,000 gold is when I really start to call <laughs> yeah. it. Not 5,000. Not, not the 6,000 gold lead they had earlier. <laughs> like, only now is the game broken open, according to, Niar to Niarko. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's an uncharitable <laughs> way of being a guy. The optimist on the desk. We got to have one, you know? <laughs> not I say 10,000 is like... Ugh. <laughs> All right, well, we're getting another attack bot side of the map. And so, yeah, I'll say this game is about over. I don't think Newt Lee can do anything. They were just transmogrified in an instant by Daption, and that allows for Dardock to pick up another one. Kim forced back towards the tier two alongside his Zack Dog. The Ultra Mega Fire Kick is going to repel the Monkey Man for the time being. But while this is all happening, Robbie Bob is running a train through the mid lane, and Levi knows they can't step up to the Fox Girl anymore. Yeah, it's, this is wave clearing. This is the Baron waiting room. We're two minutes away. Chemtech Dragon is on the menu. And you just see Wukong soloing it by himself as all of these outer turrets are being dismantled. I think we're going to get a 23-minute victory from UST. Bold of you to assume Baron will even spawn this game, Shibby. What's to stop UST from just walking down <laughs> mid lane with five right now, honestly? I mean, yeah, I, in all seriousness, though, I am expecting a quickie. It's soul point being picked up as well. They can take their bases. They've got items on everybody, and I mean, Butler, at this point, look, you came in and you knew that you were an underdog. Everybody expecting UST to handle this game very well, but you had a plan coming in. You wanted to play the Lucia Melio. You wanted to play the Kiana jungle. It hasn't worked in game number one. I mean, I feel like at this point, we gotta, we gotta find some of the cheese that Niarko has asked for because this game one has been all St. Thomas. And there's so many things to fix. No draft strategy is going to be enough to overcome the deficit that seems to exist between the players and him. This is 
caught out of the rug, gets chased down by Dardog, oh. gets a good ult off, but only can stun up the monkey, man. The Scion is left to just run this champion down. And meanwhile, while that's happening, Newtly falls to the Ari. And I think this could just be the end of the game. That's how aggressive USC want to be. Right now, Dardock is taking about half health because of that encounter with Levi. Well, Robbie Bob has a full health. Right? Robbie! Go to 1v, looks like. That being said, the Tibbers dropped, making it a 1v4. And here comes the Monkey Man over the wall. But Wukong can only do so much to frontline now. Yet still, they're oh. able to chase off these Baller University players. In fact, Carthago is just caught out. And now, with the Jakes excited, they're just able to rain down Hellfire with the rockets. Kill the Milio as well. Take an inhibitor no. and this is looking like it's everything that Butler University has to muster for this game number one a triple kill has been claimed by Shogo showing why they're the top 80 carry here in C-Law the Nexus Towers are focused Newtly Levi cannot walk up to these members no matter how low they go and I think that we're about to see UST notch up game number one Baron has spawned Hawk but you're correct 23 minutes, I was off. I, if I was a betting man, I would have lost here. They are gonna go for a very quick game time. UST looking incredibly dominant, Butler. They tried to put up a fight, but it was not enough for the reigning champions. Game one, going to UST. And that's got to be such a rough start today for Butler University and their fans. Imagine being a viewer here on Twitch. Thank you so much for tuning in, by the way, to BattleFi. But we cut to a quick delay, and then we come back. The rift is broken wide open. UST is winning everywhere. I, I guys, I don't think I don't think oh, I have no. enough. I can't measure the gap between these two teams. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I don't got enough. I'm sorry. Butler, get weird. Get cheesy. Give me the Zack. Give me the Corky top. Give me the Ziggs. You're not going to win this playing four standard champions and one substandard. I need Butler to throw out the Kim Talon. I need them to give me the Ziggs bot and everything in between. The Karthus top that these guys play that they loved in their conference. I need to see it from Butler now. Sh Shibby was busting out the measuring tape for this game. I agree. I, I don't. I don't think that was long enough. I mean, that was a, that was, that was a pretty dominant game one. Oh, pretty. That was a very dominant game one for St. Thomas. But I, again, I just want to hammer this home. Right, they were one of the tournament favorites coming in, and Butler, not a whole lot of expectations for them. Game one, I think, went about two expectations. So anything, any signs of life moving forward, whether or not they throw the book out, whatever they're able to pull out. Whatever they can do to just make some fireworks would be an upset for this series. So we'll see if they can recollect themselves and try to find some purchase into this series. Hi, on stream optimist here. Let's look at the bright side, guys. <laughs> Butler University. Is there a bright side right now to that game? They, they emerged from the Jackson Pollock morass with three kills to their name, and the Kiana, after being bullied for so long, was activated to a degree. We cut back to them getting a kill in their own jungle. University of St. Thomas clearly are egoing to a degree. They're going very aggro. If you could just stabilize these lanes a little bit earlier, maybe pick something that's a bit more stable in that jungle role, there is the ability to impact this early game, get in under UST, and maybe at least make a statement, if not take a game. I don't know. That is what I'm hoping for, guys. Regardless, we're going to throw it to a quick break, and when do we return? It's be for the second draft of the day. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the C LOL Championship Playoffs. I'm Nyarko with the actual name now here. So you can follow <laughs> me on Twitter if you so want. You can follow these guys on Twitter as well, as they are certainly carrying me through the speed run that USC is putting on versus Butler University. Hawk, Shibby, what do you think needs to change for that first game? You heard Ooh. me. You heard me. You heard me. You know what I Ooh. want. I know. I know Butler knows what I want. It's just, will they end up giving it to me? I know they're spicy. I know they've got some cheese. And you guys talked about the moldiness, all this. Goat cheese is good, guys. All right? Goat cheese, blue cheese, it's actually pretty damn good. Give it a try. Uh, I don't know, man. My, I'm not I'm not as much of a moldy cheese fan, but I, I know where you're at, Chippy. And you know what? I, I'm going to take a much simpler approach. What do, what needs to change in the second game? Butler needs to find a lane and try to boom it. They a little bit tried it with the flash for flash trade that Shibby so talked about last game. Unfortunately, they got punished to hell and back by Dardoch and Robbie Bob and, and took over. 
on the bottom side of the map. But I want to see, you know, something like a Jarvan, something that can just pick a lane and try to make it difficult for UST. Because, again, volatility as the underdog is the name of the game. Create volatility, and you might just be able to destabilize UST's game plan enough to cheese out a win. But if, you know, we've talked about this, if we're going standard pound for pound, blow for blow against the team of the caliber of the University of St. Thomas, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, it's hard to say that anything is really going to work against this team that has created such momentum off of a game number one like that. University of St. Thomas didn't even drag that one out. They didn't even grab a Baron. They just ended the game. That means they're coming in with a head full of steam and really not a whole lot of tiredness to their name. They didn't have to wear down anybody to really have a carry performance to pop off and put their name in the history books. As a collective, they just kind of smashed through Butler University's defenses. And where does that leave a team who now has the homework of shoulder the burden taking down one of these titanic players and trying to focus a lane when even your jungler isn't safe in their own camps i don't think you break bot as we are getting into the draft here i think shogo and daption are just too good right they're too good at recovering 80 carries a roll that with enough farm can come back into the game i think you go go all in on robbie bob man you saw how aggressive he got he was going pretty deep with the ari and i like the annie pick they just didn't follow up any longer, right? They didn't go with the repeat gank. They didn't take advantage of the flash. I think mid lane is the way to go. I think also if you want to boom the top side, right? Hawk mentioned, he's a weak side player. Make him weaker, make him suffer in that top lane. Yeah, you could make weak side a weakness, maybe if you're feeling ambitious, but I don't know, should be giving Shogo run on the map feels so dangerous. But with Butler back on the red side, let's see how they're able to leverage this red side R5 counter pick. Last time around, they went for the Gwen for Newtly into TC Porsche Scion. And Porsche was kind of just being chilling up there the whole time. Uh, so I, I would maybe want to see that counter pick go towards mid lane, perhaps, for Levi. See if they get, can get uh -oh. something in there. But UST. They actually identify the Melio, perhaps, as a bit of an issue. Take that one away for Daption on B1. They took the Ziggs away. Please lock that in. Please lock that in. Do not hover it. Do not play with my heart. I would love to see this rotated early just to see how much fun this team could have. Seraphine coming in. I think still a super busted champion, but instead we get the Kim Talon, baby! Yeah, I mean, okay, there you go. You asked for it. You asked for the signature comfort. And you know what? At this level of play, at any level of play, when your back is against the wall and your season is on the line, comfort is king. We have the assassin slam down. We'll see what the response is for St. Thomas. Ooh, they're willing to go Lucian Milio. They want to take a page out of Butler's book here. Don't know if I want to even, you know, say that I could play that if I'm USD. I would love, love to keep that in my back pocket, but maybe they're using this as reps. Maybe they're using this as practices. Now, I don't know if that's going to be a Nautilus jungle. Dardock tends to have a little bit of fun when he plays, and I think it is actually a Nautilus <laughs> jungle here. I actually think this is going in Dardock's hands. So we did have a Nautilus jungle. I'm trying to remember who played it and when, but there, I think there was a Nautilus jungle in the NACL qualifiers, if I'm not mistaken, this season. Uh, it lost. It was horrible. But it, or no, no, it was on CBLOL. Sorry, it was in CBLOL. We had a Nautilus yes. jungle. Um, I, it lost, and it was terrible, but we had a Nautilus jungle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, look, look, I love Nautilus. I used to like him when he was actually a jungler with Spirit of the Ancient Golem way back when. But now he's not suited for that role here. But I, I don't think Dardoch cares. This is the same guy that picked Yorick Jungle in the South Conference Grand Final. He's willing to have a little bit of fun. He's willing to do a little bit of wackiness and goofiness. But Nyarko, what are we looking at, man? We are looking at a wild, wild game ahead of us. This could be the time for Butler to strike because, like we said, the weakness of UST when they're up against the underdogs is their ego. And if this Nautilus gets behind, I don't know how they're ever going to be able to reassert themselves onto the map. They're just going to be too fragile. They're going to struggle to farm their camps. But there's also a chance that this is a lame Nautilus, by the way. We have to go check the YouTube history of Porsche to see if he's been watching this Happy Chime Noises video as I think they featured a Nautilus top recently on oh. there. But here comes the spice <laughs> from Butler as well. Woo! They got that Zach you were talking about. Comfort's king, baby. 
Comfort is indeed king. The Zack, the talent, it's all coming together. Now, I, I, I got the stats on the Nautilus jungle. It's been played twice in the leagues that at least I'm involved in or follow in some way. Rosethorn played it to a victory for Golden Guardians challengers against CLG Faith in the NACL spring season this past split. And then INTZ, their jungler, played it against the Vivo Cade Stars in the CB lol. Uh, and it went 0-7 and, and lost really terribly. So there's one win, one loss. We'll see how Dardoch is able to pilot this. I think that was the only, one of the only Vivo Keed wins, by the way, in CV LOL, unfortunately. It was not a great season for, the, not a great season for either of those teams, Shippy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I will agree on that, but we see the Zach support. Unfortunately, the Ziggs is taken off the board, so now, what do they throw? What other wacky pick can they give me to say, hey, Butler, we are going to come out, we are going to get weird, and the Orn actually coming in, that's pretty standard, actually. I mean, you're talking about getting wacky, getting weird for, for Butler. Shibby, I think we're glossing over something. That's a Robbie Bob Zed in the mid lane, just slammed down. No problemo. I mean, UST, they're getting a little funky too. It is going to be a very explosive game too. Explosive certainly is one way to put it. Could be more explosive with the Ziggs, as they literally are the Bombardier, but, you know, I'm happy with what we got here. I think that Butler University have shored um. up some of the weaknesses that came from their last draft phase, in that this Orn will actually be a legitimate frontline, and you therefore have some guaranteed value to last more than five seconds during a team fight. But UST, both looking to have fun with it, but also looking to dominate the early game in a way that I think we very rarely see from them. That Lucian Milio combo bot side of the map is going to be very strong and I think it massively outranges at least the Zach. Maybe Seraphine's going to be a little bit safer for the time being. Um, but outside of that, you got a Zed prowling around, moving into that mid lane. The question for me is, yes, that's going to be an Orn mid, actually, for Butler instead of putting the cannon in that side. And I actually really like the Orn mid swap. Drew Dozer somewhere on the other side of the CeeLo bracket is, is smiling at the Orn mid getting played. I, I just think, look... Butler, very different look. Lots of comfort, which is exactly what we asked for. Shibby, you're getting the talent for Kim, right? <laughs> like, some exciting champions being played here. But damage is a concern, and the University of St. Thomas have unbelievable skirmish power from start to finish in this game. If you thought they took an inch and t uh, got a mile last time around, that is going to be taken up to a factor of... 10 in this one. I'm looking at UST to be making plays early and often and dictating the River Highway. Butler, you've got to find a way to play defense. I know what this team comp does is good. You mentioned the lack of damage, but the thing is, you have to grind through these health bars. Eventually, it's a war of attrition. They are just going to wait for UST's hands to get tired. That is the comp. I understand what you're doing, Butler. You're playing the 4D chess. You are just going to make them get so tired pressing <laughs> buttons that eventually you just win out the fight. And it's not only about tiredness in terms of mental, in terms of hands, but I do think that this Orn does another smart thing, and it kind of blanks the early power of the Zed, at least in the lane itself. It's going to be super hard for an assassin with an energy meter to be able to take down a champion with as momentous of a health bar as that Orn has, and that means that Butler University do have a stable lane on the map. They have something that they could try to deeply trade, and they have something that the Zack could roam up to, or the Talon could move to. Now, do I think that Robbie Bob is going to be the easiest player to to kill absolutely not it's a zed with great escape power but at least this time around we have a place where we could zoom in and say hey butler university have kind of a basic control that they could play off of and now most certainly we get into the spectator delay we look at their compositions we've analyzed it enough we saw what happened game one it was a 20 minute uh victory but really the thing that impresses me about butler their bag of tricks it, 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 it never it's never emptying guys I, I can't there's just so much in here this butler is reaching man it, i can't empty it it's, it, they're like a magician Oh, man. I, I I love it. They got a bag of holding worth of picks in there, you know? <laughs> They're just pulling all of them out. I know. I They have completely thrown out the book this time around. I, I, I still don't know if I'd necessarily call this cheese cheese, but it's certainly non-standard. And again, volatility is the way to throw a team like the University of St. Thomas off their game and potentially find a win. We'll see if it's enough. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I think that right now the game really holds in the balance of how well University of St. Thomas are able to translate their own weird picks like this Nautilus into the sober, strong play that they showed in game number one. If they also are kind of clowning around, that gives the angle for Butler University to rally. Like I said, I think that Orn is going to be a huge tipping point. It allows for them to actually make macro calls rather than being kind of put in the straitjacket where they have to do nothing except for sit there and respond to all the aggression of UST and if they're given that space to breathe like I said you have a relatively stable bot lane yeah Millie Lucian can be super scary but Seraphine is virtually an artillery mage and can have a really oppressive showing alone down there just kind of bombing the wave preventing the Lucian Millie from getting to them and bring up Nat Dog to also move with Kim and provide the tankiness that the Talon might lack alone as a ganker they are swapping the invades, right? We saw USD go five-man bottom to get that bush lane control. Now they've gone five-man top, while Butler has gone five-man bottom. And I've heard inklings of this godlike Butler Kim talent. I need to see it. I need to see some action. Got a lot of good targets here to assassinate, right? The Lucian, the Zed, the Silas. I want to see if he's willing to chance and tempt fate against the Dardoch Nautilus in his jungle. Now, UST, once again, though, properly identifying the most volatile lane in this game. Porsche against Newtley, Silas against Kennen, and Newtley opting for the Ignite on the Kennen, eschewing the, the ability to go for a big TP flank and that laning safety. I mean, clearly, this is going to be a place where a lot of action is potentially found, or maybe it is just going to be this the Silas against the Orn. They end up swapping back. I... Don't know if I'm a fan of this for Butler. I'm certainly not a fan of it, mostly because I like Orn a lot in the mid lane. I think just in general, tanks need to be played there a bit more. I was a big fan of playing Scion as stuff like Fizz or like the Zed. Uh, here, you're having a much more kind of standard Mage v. Assassin matchup. And this is one where Robbie Bob can't just kind of hand diff Levi or, excuse me, Newtly and really make an impact. Meanwhile, top side of the map, I think that Porsche, especially with a teleport available, can play that War of Attrition quite nicely against the Orn, get a CS lead, and get an advantage that allows for them to really just kind of assassinate people across the map. Now, my eyes are going to trail back towards the bot side because this is one of the matchups where I really want to see if Butler University can at least stabilize their stocks and from there make the moves I was talking about. I just want to highlight the cojones on uh, Butler Natog here. Dark Harvest Zack support? That is a Chad if I've ever seen one, right? He, he's going in for one thing and one thing only. It's a one-way ticket to get some kills. He wants the stack. He wants to put pressure. And I don't know. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you've played. If you're Shogo, if you're Prey, if you're, Prey, if you're Deft, you've never played against Seraphine Zack bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, hey, again, the comfort level. Butler pulling out all the stocks to see what they are able to do. But, Nyarko, you set up that you wanted to see stability on the bottom side of the map. UST already starting to make some <laughs> waves. Dardock just being a little gremlin in Kim's jungle. Might be in danger. Certainly in danger. I actually think Dardock just doesn't have the damage to go for an invade alone. And the cavalry is here first for Butler University. Robbie Bob tries to save the Nautilus, Wait but that's minute. first blood over to Butler. In Wait fact, a it's a double kill to Kim. Although that being said, Karthago is in quite a bit of trouble getting chased very, down very all the way deep. into enemy territory. It's actually Shogo trying to pull the trigger. They can't quite get the kill. Nat Dog is going to cover for their APC. And now, I got to say, the Lucian Billy are up the creek without a paddle. Kim is coming in. Mother They're going to wall up parkour alongside them. There's the Ignite being dropped. Shogo goes down. And now it's all up to the Milio to try to zoom to safety. They got to make it by the tower. They got to make it through the goo arm. They got to make it through Newtly running around the corner. Butler has just routed UST! 4-0 Butler Kim and the rest of the squad are coming in hot! UST may have Eco just a little bit too much in this game too. Yeah, Nyarko asked to see the Ego. He said that might be the one win condition for Butler and it does happen. Now, this game most certainly far from over but those are huge kills for Butler to be able to pick up and I mean, this is as good of a chance as they're going to get with their backs against the wall and their season on the line. The Kim Talon is fed. <laughs>
And that's so good for Butler University. Getting the kills onto the champion that's looking to just move around the map and bring that gold value to every single lane means that they're going to be able to put the clamps onto UST early in this one. And actually, with St. Thomas on the back foot basically everywhere except for the top side of the map right now, they kind of have open season as to where they want to move and what they want to do. I said it was core that they get this Nautilus behind in particular, and we already see that they just will not have the gold to go for their same kinds of ballsy invades that they initiated the game with and got punished for. Yeah, I mean, e even after the dust has settled, you look at the CS once again across the board, everybody on USC side is on the lead. So this 4-0 kill score isn't as damning as you think. Shogo specifically, 40 to 14 CS right now. I, I don't know what this lane is supposed to do. I don't know if it's supposed to go down in CS and you're just supposed to be kind of wacky and goofy as now. Dardock is going to be looking for a gank in the bot lane with this Nautilus jungle. Yeah, I mean, that's why you pick Nautilus, right? The gank power is substantial. You're not playing full clear Nautilus in this game whatsoever. I know I know people that I've casted with in the past know my opinions on things like full clear Lee Sin, full clear J4. Nautilus most certainly falls into that camp. It seems like it's just going to be a dragon start utilizing the pressure that Shogo and Daption do have. And we highlighted this earlier. Despite all the kills going down, UST does have substantial lane pressure in every single position still. So... Butler does maintain a marginal gold advantage, but UST is in the driver's seat in this game despite that. Yeah, for sure. And I said before that it's kind of up to these individual lanes of UST now to get back into this game. I still think that top side of the map in the hands of Porsche is a great <laughs> thing. Uh, but while that's all happening, we got to look bot once again because that's going to be Shogo alongside their support. Pincered with the Nautilus already <laughs> dead for a second time. And we'll also see the Milio depart from this mortal coil as well. Now that's a 4-0, and o, Kim. And I think that that means any more dragons are going to be a tough call for UST. It's a 4 0 Talon on the enemy team. I don't care who you are. That is a very, very fed champion. Yeah. He's going to start one shotting your Lucian, your Milio, your Zed. He's going to get to a point where you are just not allowed to have fun this game. I, I got to be honest. I think I think Dardock is having a bit of fun this game. I, I, <laughs> this man just sticks Dragon in the face of the Talon. Got the drag at least, but. Yeah, giving up another kill. And I mean, again, you know, we're sort of memeing, but Kim is very much in a position to carry this game. And if there's anyone that can do it, again, comfort at this level, he might just be the hero that Butler needs. Hitting that level six now has so much kill threat around the map. Completed Yomu's Ghost Blade in inventory. Now, let's remember, USC does still have overwhelming skirmish power, but a gank in the mid lane could start to upset the status quo in favor of Butler. It's going to take a lot to set up to actually kill Robbie Bob. I think it's going to require an overcommitment on the Zed's part. Yeah, that is the exact kind of situation that the Zed thrives off of. Be very telegraphed to engage there from the cannon. And just zoom back to your shadow under the tower. The one thing to note, the thing that keeps UST very much in this game and still a massive threat for Butler's hopes of keeping this series alive is the fact that, yeah, they have six kills. They have not been able to push more than a thousand gold ahead of Blue Squad. Yeah, I think that gank was pinged out. Talon did place that pink war down, so now Robbie, smartly enough, not committing a shadow, but TC Porsche in this top lane is bullying Orn out right now. Look how confidently he's playing up the lane because he's just not afraid of a butler. Kim gank, he's not afraid of anything. They're tracking this jungler pretty well as now the bear, or sorry, the herald play comes into fruition. Butler first on the play. It's a blast plan. Yeah, Dardock can no longer walk up to these kinds of plays with three <laughs> Red Squad members there. Robbie Bob comes back into the mid lane to make sure that the Nautilus doesn't die, but that isn't an indicator that UST can actually contest this Shelly at all. Really good call by Butler using this priority, using this advantage, and making sure that Dardock continues to be a non-entity in this one. Yeah, but UST though, they've got their bottom lane all the way pushed up. Carthago's not going to be able to be involved in this one. And with Shogo and Daption coming up, we're going to see a contest for this Herald. Dardok is running out of base. Many ults available. Here they go. 
Call of the Forge got activated. And that's a double knock up. However, Butler Levi has their own ultimate. Attack. Too early. So Porsche stole, and they're going to be able to CC the Silas. Another kill over to Kim. However, Deathmark is activated, and that's a shutdown flowing over to Robbie Bob. And they actually want to push even deeper, getting Levi low. They cower under the tier one. The Zed reset. UST strike back, but Butler, they get everything. A bit premature on the call of the Forge God. It's okay, TC Forge. Everybody's got those problems here. So now Butler able to take the kill lead, the Herald, everything going in their favor. It's Robbie Bob looking to go in. Butler. They just don't have the health anymore to play. Nat Dog actually walks right up. Their support Zach, so it isn't like they can actually go for the duel. And Levi doesn't have the health bar to walk up to this assassin either. But that is a repulsion of Robbie Bob's attempted dive under the tower. And it shows that UST, their egos are kind of getting the best of them. They no longer have the ability to overwhelm this early game like they did in the first match. I mean, that Dark Harvest proc on the Zach was really depressing. But I mean, honestly, <laughs> the Herald play by Butler, pretty well played. All things considered, they're able to kite out. Porsche was forced to go early because UST was just a little bit too late. And thought he could buy enough time, was mistaken. Now it is Robbie Bob getting that massive shutdown off of him. UST will be able to for it. Was it enough? It was not having way at the blue above and at the gromp. But you know, I think that that is a good showing of what the Nautilus needs to do right now. Farm up, try to become a bit more present on the map. That being said, the map has devolved and melted into goo once again. I'm melting, I'm melting! Oh, maybe just like USG's chances in this game, as I know, I heard a flash going off. I know Butler's yeah, inside to do something. <laughs> Talon is going for a kill. If you guys can see the blades, I see it. Butler got a kill. I think it was the Zack Dark Harvest. Yeah, that's not got it. it. <laughs> Dark Harvest Zack I mean, that's coming another up kill. <laughs> oh my, apologies again for all the technical difficulties. Things like this do happen when you're trying to run a remote broadcast and uh, we'll Try to be back game as shortly as humanly possible for all of you. But the fact remains that it is still UST and Butler going blow for a blow. But it was indeed Butler landing the most recent blow. Yeah, I certainly. The fact that they're able to push the state of advantage is the thing that impresses me the most right now. Butler University, like I said, needed to make a statement if they could not win a game. And not only are they making a statement here in the second match that they cannot be trifled with, that UST can't put on the clown noses and just still run them over, but they actually are oriented to win this. I think if UST lose this, we might actually see the talent respect man <laughs> coming out. Like, I don't <laughs> think Kim gets it, dude. I I actually I, don't think that. I'm like, okay, yeah, you could say. Was Dardock Talon the problem, or was Dardock for funning at the problem, though, Shippy? Like, let, let's let's ask ourselves the real questions here. <laughs> they, they actually Talon just Nautilus fan. <laughs> oh, Talon no. is putting the fear of God into USD. I know that's I happening think, right now. <laughs> I think Alorum's gonna ban Nautilus so that Dardock can't play it anymore yeah. after this one. Like, I, I think that's gonna be. That's going to be the, the real fix for this one. I mean, and, and the fact remains, uh, UST, at least from where we saw, was still, again, doing a pretty good job of keeping things close. Despite the kills that have gone over, they're still just individually outlaning Butler across the map. And their composition is very well built to fight. And we've not really seen those big fights crack off. And so... UST definitely has win conditions in this game, despite how lopsided the kill score may look. And that does mean that uh, a team to that caliber especially should not be counted out. I'll be the Butler optimist once again, though. Yes, UST has been keeping the gold close. The thing is... I'm fine with the Seraphine and the Orn falling a little bit behind on CS. In fact, I think it's vaguely expected versus, versus Lucian Milio and versus a Silas, right? Uh, in the mid lane, I do kind of want to see this cannon get a little bit more gold under their belt, but they have the ability to have that facilitated to them because of how strong the talent is at this point in time. And I think that the raw utility of some of Red Squad's champions could just give them the insurance to make it deeper into this game and really continue to strike back against UST where we can actually see that gold lead very much much develop in their favor 
And now I think we might just go to a very short break while we fix everything up uh, at the moment here. Uh, I know we're in a pause. Technical difficulties are really happening. We've talked about the teams. We've talked about the game state. I mean, Butler right now is looking pretty, pretty good here. Uh, Hawk, do you have anything else to say? Oh, I mean, not really. I like. I think. I think we've said everything that needs to be said. Right. We'll see if Butler's able to execute. Right. Their composition on paper has great scaling, but the damage scaling very, very, very low. The one person that needed to get fed is the Talon, though. So we'll see if they're able to convert or if UST will roll their way to a two-zero. All right. Well, guys, we are going to be right back at you with more seal and specifically action within the UST versus Butler University matchup. But we do have to cut to a quick break. I think we got to best with our observer just a little bit. And from there, we shall be back on the rift. Hello, friends, and a welcome back to the Sea Law Playoffs in this matchup between UST and Butler University. As we cut to the rift with a massive kill lead over to Butler University, bouncing back after what was a game one disaster. UST has so much momentum there, but it's come to a grinding halt now. Let's see if Red Spot can continue to put on the clamps. We have shifted forward a little bit in time. If you guys recall, we're at the 10 minute 40 second mark, but now one dragon has gone over to Butler. I believe the second Rift Herald was taken in between that time. I can't really tell you. They're probably used, but now the third dragon of the game, Cloud Dragon as well. We are on a Cloud Soul going over to Butler as UST completely forfeit that objective as Robbie Bob splitting in the top lane. But I think the important story of this game, Nyarka brought up the kill lead for Butler, but look at the gold. Only a thousand still separating these two teams in UST. They're lurking on the top side of the map. They want to continue to try to funnel gold into their pockets. But Levi playing very respectfully, not going to give them the window. And I mean, fellas, after game one, it looked like it was going to be all UST all day. But in game two, they do still have their work cut out for them. We might be in for a slugfest down the stretch here. And here's my view of what's happening right now. Yes, it is the case that UST is keeping it close, but I think that there's a lot of guaranteed value on Butler's side that might actually accelerate this mid to late game in their favor. Orn just has to play safe, and Levi is very clearly knowing that that's, that, that's their work. They're just staying topside, putting a little bit of pressure from the Robbie Bob split, but otherwise just grabbing themselves some CS. They want that XP to be able to distribute the ornaments to stuff like the Talon, to the Cannon, who both have bounties on them, by the way, and those are the people you need to have movement, you need to have in a really strong position of power. Who cares if the Seraphine is behind about 45, 42 CS versus the Lucian? You always will have an Encore there. And I'm coping, guys, but I'm hoping at the same time. I think Butler might have this. Well, Dark Harvest Zack is always lurking under your bed. He's the monster in your dreams. He's the nightmare that's coming to haunt you. I think Butler and Attack, we saw him pick up a kill. I uh, like you said, I'm hyping it up a little bit. It is still only a thousand gold. And that's just a testament to how strong UST is in regards to even when they go down uh, so many kills, even when they give up so much, they're able to just keep it even against a team that is perceived worse than them. Butler Kim, though, looking to cause some havoc. Gaption a little bit caught out. Shogo's there to cover. Here's the ultimate already activated by the uh, Talon. They're also going to put forth the open <laughs> ghost play. But that is horrifying. Lucian first just deletes Kim from the game. And that's your carry gone. Now, UST are trying to push deeper. That's a call the Forge Goddess of Prior activated by Levi to stop the approach. But it doesn't stop the Lightning Scroll from being killed in enemy territory. And now, here's the full on jump forward. Shogo trying to get as much damage as possible for a red score. Squad and the remnants will slink behind the tier two tower and remain safe. Dootly, dootly, I, nobody saw that. He flashed, missed the wall with his ultimate. He's just ulting nobody. Uh, close your eyes, avert it. It would have been actually an insane play if the cannon got over the wall because he would have got a three man slicing maelstrom. But instead, everything goes awry and USD take full advantage. And finally, UST gets their due. We had said we were waiting for the moment in which their champions were able to fight together. It was a great pick on the overextended Kim, and from there on out, UST, now they are finally in the driver's seat. Dardock may be getting caught out, but I don't think it's going to result in too much. It might even be a collapse. 
Jack, him now super deep up against three members. They're invisible for a little while, but the Zed will eventually find you. Robbie Bob going to harvest another kill from Kim. And now UST have pretty open season around this Baron Nasher. The gold lead is not so intense that I think they could immediately rush it down. But a dead jungler at this point in the game is so dangerous. Butler University have to be much more careful. Tarduck just tanked a full talent combo at like 25% HP, right? He procs the aftershock, Butler Kim dumps all his abilities on him and he's just was completely fine. He even had the ultimate in his back pocket just in case. But now, Baron being started by USD, rightfully so, they're ahead. And remember we said Butler to win this game, they had to create volatility, they had made to make UST uncomfortable. They were able to do that for the first 15 minutes of the game, but now at 20 minutes, it is UST back in control. An uncontested Baron going over on the respawn timer of the Butler jungle. And I do want to just point something out as well. Dardoch, the Nautilus jungle, it looked it looked pretty awful in the early game. It was it was getting caught out, it wasn't skirmishing very well, but in this mid-game with the even shroud, it has really been able to frontline effectively for St. Thomas and allow these fights lay out the targets for Zed, for Lucian and give them places to go and people to hit and people to kill and UST executing well in the middle stages of the game. Yeah, they certainly have been trying to find people to kill. First uh -oh. it was Kim, now it's Carthago in a lot of trouble. The death charge is placed onto them, they have to go golden, but now they are at the mercy of four blue squad members just jumping on them, and the kill will eventually go over to Shogo. That is so terrifying, right? Nautilus comes in, then you saw him, and the rest of the team is just lurking around you, knowing that you're dead to rights. Now, Baron being taken, UST, they want to end this. They want to go eat lunch, dinner, whatever, man. They're, they're, they're so done with this, this, this game right now. Yeah, UST, they're not even going to pay attention to these sideline outers that are still up. They're just going to bear down on the inhibitor tower. They know if they're able to crack open the base. The defense of the butler will fall shortly thereafter. Butler, they've already survived longer than in game number one, but Levi. it looks like the result may all be the same. Levi with a very extended point. He's going he fires off and they're calling the fourth god, but Dardoch is tanking up everything. They eventually get hit by the Encore and go down. Now Porsche though has an entry point and two members of Butler University have already fallen. This is once again leaving this inhibitor exposed to perhaps even more of Red Squad's base right now. It looks like they're just going to go for the reset, but they have pushed so deep. USC TP. wants to control of this game. It's TP right back, so Robbie Bob actually is just going to return here and look to end the game at the 23 minute mark. Robbie. Death mark, a jump in onto Kim. This assassin, it will be assassinated. Robbie Bob showing who's the better one on the rift as the Zach passive is popped and there was absolutely oh. no coverage for those blobs, giving the double kill over to the mid laner of UST uh. at a second game running for this squad. UST looking to barrel down right now. I think they're gonna end here. They've got the minions. Maybe the health bar is a little too high though for Butler. They may not chance it. They might smartly back away as Nautilus. Dardoch is coming back into the mid lane. And ever since getting that 700 gold shutdown off of Kim around that second Herald, Robbie Bob has just taken over the map as another kill goes down to Newtley on the exit. He is level 16 on this Zed, 8, 1, and 2. It has been a dominating series from the mid laner of University of St. Thomas. We are in a position where now USD, after having pushed so deep, might have to go for resets in places where Butler University can interrupt them. But Porsche basically just uses themselves as bait. And now Carthago is just not able to do enough off that Encore to save themselves or the Ord. Levi holding on for so long, but even this low Milio is able to get out from under the Forge God. And that's a triple kill delivered and packaged over to Robbie Bob. Now. As the Shirelius gets popped, the speed boost comes in. Minions were cleared into the mid lane, but Shogo oh and God. Robbie Bob bullying, taking Newtley's lunch money. What a just domination <laughs> this game has been. Look, Butler, they fought back a lot better. Credit where credit is due, but unfortunately, the reigning champions are looking for their crown, and it starts with a round of 32 2 0 sweep. 
no tools left. Butler University. They will fight until the bitter end. Credit to them. They don't dance inside the base. They jump out of the fountain. They look to try to stop these Blue Squad members. Big knock up from Levi, but it's not enough to stop the crystal from being cracked. And that is going to be a clean 2-0 for one of the top contenders of the tournament. Rough, rough game. Game two looked better than game one, don't get me wrong, but the Nautilus jungle goes undefeated so far in CLOL top 32 here. I don't know if we're going to see it again. Maybe, maybe not here. Uh, very well played from UST, and unfortunately for Butler, they will have to bow out of the round of 32. UST makes it to the round of 16. 2-0 clean sweep and very, very quick games. Congratulations to them. Uh, I think we're expecting a lot, lot more from them, right, Hawk? Oh, yeah, we are. I mean, I think they are definitely one of the favorites to win the whole thing. And you can see why, even in a tricky game, their carries are just too damn good. Robbie Bob and Shogo, the mid laner and ADC of St. Thomas, they know how to team fight. They know how to restabilize a game. And once Robbie Bob got a lead, it was off to the races in both of these games. Congratulations to University of St. Thomas. For sure, you will be seeing more of them here in CeeLo. The expectations are high. And while, yes, they did have a little bit of an ego moment here, I think that, if anything, this is a good snap back to reality very early in the tournament. We need to see commitment from USC that they are here to win it. And, you know, once they cleaned up their act, once they got this online, they certainly showed that they have the ability to overpower so many teams here in the CeeLo bracket, starting with Butler University, who put up a valiant effort, but eventually went down over. So we hopefully will be able to jump back here very soon onto the stream with a brand new matchup. But first and foremost, we got to throw it to a quick break, or I think maybe it's actually a little bit more of a prolonged break, unfortunately, because of the way that our schedule works. But yes, we will be back here with more best of threes today. So make sure that you guys don't go anywhere. We'll see you soon.